Do you want to learn how you can keep your images and files secure and locked down inside your S3 bucket, but still give short-term access to very specific people? In this video, that is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can lock down our S3 buckets so that our files and images are more secure and are private and read only. And when we've done this, we might still want to give access short term to very specific users. To do this, we're going to use a signed URL to generate that access. A signed URL is very similar to a normal image URL inside an S3 bucket, but there are some parameters on the end which allow access for a short period of time to those images and files. So we're going to jump into the code right now and see how we can set this up. Before we jump into the video, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has liked, subscribed and commented on any of my videos as we've just reached a massive milestone. We've just hit 2000 subscribers. It's been a lot of work, but it's really great to see that my videos are helping you guys. I've had loads of comments from people saying that one of the videos has helped them solve a problem they were really fighting with through to one guy who said he'd watched through all of my series and actually got a promotion because of it. It's amazing to see how these videos can really help you guys out. And for the next goal, I want to hit 5,000 subscribers. So if you haven't done already, please subscribe down in the bottom corner and help me reach this next goal to help more of you guys become really top-notch developers. Now that we're in the code, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our bucket so that is a private bucket and remove the public access properties from the images when we upload them. So in our serverless YAML file, if we scroll down to our bucket, which is right at the bottom in resources, we'll find our image upload bucket. In here, we need to take the access control and remove that just like that to get rid of the public read. We can now save that file. And now we need to remove it explicitly from when we upload the files as well. If we go across into image upload.js, in here we can scroll down until we find the S3 put object. This is what we did in the last video. And if you want to learn about how to upload images and resize them, I'm going to link those up in the top corner just now. But as you can see, here we have an access control list which says it is public read. As we want to make these images private now, we want to delete that. So now we can go into our terminal and run SLS deploy, which will now deploy our bucket without the public read access and also change this Lambda function so it doesn't attach an access control list of public read onto our images. This takes a little while to do, so now would be a great time to hit that like button as it really helps the YouTube algorithm suggest this video to more developers just like yourselves. Now that that has finished deploying, we can scroll up in here and get our image upload URL and head over into the browser. Here I've got the image upload website that we've used in the last couple of videos. I'm going to paste in my image and I'm going to open the console as well. This will be important as we'll see in a second. If we now click choose an image and select an image, when I upload that, 
instead of getting the image shown here, it shows just an image icon with the text there. If we now inspect on this element, in here we can see that my image upload bucket with a upload of a id.jpg. So what we can do is we can copy this and we can go into a new browser and paste it in. When we do that, we get an access denied. That just shows that our image is not accessible from the web, whether you go directly to the URL, or in this case, when you put the source of an image as the URL, it just shows up as an inaccessible image. So now we've got that, what we can do is change our upload image lambda so that we are creating our signed URL so that we can give out a specific URL which does allow access to our file. So the first thing that we need to do inside here is we need to create a way of generating our signed URL. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our s3.js file and after our reads and writes, we're going to add a new method. This is going to be an async method called get signed URL. It's going to take a bucket, file name, and then an expiry. And that's going to be in seconds. So once we've got this, we need to use these parameters to generate our signed URL. So we're going to return S3 client. And on our S3 client, there is a get signed URL function, which takes a couple of parameters. The first is the method that we want to allow. In this case, we only want to allow people to get this image. We don't want people to re-upload a new image over the top of it. So we can say get object. As well as that, we have an object that needs some parameters. First, we need a bucket, which is going to point at our bucket. As well as that, we need a key, which is going to be the file name. And then finally, we can have an expires value, which we're going to put to our expiry in seconds. So this expires is going to be if we want this URL to last for a short period. For example, if you want to allow a customer to view the image for the next hour, but then not view it again in the future through that same URL, you could set this to be 3,600, which is the number of seconds in an hour. If we don't pass up an expiry in seconds, this URL that we're generating will actually last forever. So it's a security thing, which is up to you. So now that we've finished our get signed URL, we can head back into our image upload file and make a couple of changes. The first is we want to change this original S3 put into our own S3 write. So what we need to do is scroll to the very top of the file. And instead of using the AWS SDK like this, we can actually import S3 from dot dot slash common slash S3. We can now go back down to our S3 and change this a little bit. So now it's going to be S3 dot write. And this write takes data, then a file name, a bucket, ACL, and the content type. So the first thing is the data, which in our case is going to be buffer. After the buffer, we need to get the file name, which is going to be key. 
as well as the key, we need the bucket name. So we can cut, copy that and put that in there. Finally, the bucket type, uh, sorry, the access control list. And for this, we're gonna go with null as we don't want to provide one as this makes it private. And the last thing is the content type. So I'm gonna paste that in and I can actually delete all of this. Now that we have this new S3 write, we also need a new URL, which is going to be given to us from our create signed URL. So the first thing we need to do is delete all of this and say that the new URL is going to be await s3.write, sorry, s3.getSigned URL. And that also takes a couple of parameters, a bucket, a file name, and an expiry in seconds. So the bucket is that value there. The file name is going to be key. And then there is an optional timeout and I'm gonna put 60 seconds on there and save that. I've put 60 seconds on so that we can access the image for the first time and copy it into a new browser and see that we can access it freely. But then after a minute, we'll try accessing it again and we should see that we are no longer able to access our image. This is really useful when you want to give someone, whether it's a staff member, a customer, or a member of the public, access to some of your private files, but you don't want them having constant and continuous access to it. So this timeout could be used for anything you want. If we now save that and go into our terminal, we can run SLS deploy minus F as we're only uploading functional code and it is going to be image up load like that. And we do this because when we're uploading just function code, it is much quicker and we'll be able to test it out much sooner. And as we can see, that is already done. So again, we can scroll back up and get our post image URL from when we previously deployed it, head back into our browser and refresh the page. We can use the same image upload URL, which should have our new and updated Lambda behind it. Choose an image, and I'm gonna choose this image this time, and hit open. As you can see, we can now access this image. If we inspect on it, we can see that this is a much, much longer URL. And if we paste it into a new tab, we can see that we still have access to this file. This is definitely still a private file though, because if we wait for 60 seconds and then refresh this page, the access key that has been added to the end of this in our signed URL will have expired so we'll no longer have access to it. So on that attempt, you can see that we're now getting an access denied as we were doing previously when we didn't have our signed URLs. This is because the signed URL was set to have a timeout of 60 seconds, which has obviously expired. In this video, we have learned how we can lock down our S3 buckets by making them private and removing the public read permissions from our files. This means that by default, if someone tries to view that image or that file, they're gonna get an access denied response. To allow us to share these images or files, we've then created a signed URL. This means that our users or customers can access this image or file, but it isn't publicly accessible. We also then add added a 
expiry to it so that we could limit how long that URL was valid for. This means that they couldn't copy or save that image URL to their own machine and use it for days and days and days. So it means that our risk of exposing that file to the general public is much reduced. If you've learned something new in this video and are thinking of maybe using it in one of your projects, then please make sure to give this video a like as it helps share this to more developers like yourselves so we get to use more secure systems in our design. And if you haven't done already, make, to subs make sure to subscribe down here as it will help you develop as a software engineer as you will learn more about serverless as I release more videos.